keeping it with the blood theme here today, I've got Chosen of Corn under the banner of Chaos Undivided, which means they can get Festus as their lord. This game was with Reginald Puggington, uh, runner-up on the Summer Championship, and I couldn't show this replay due to the embargoes. I also probably wouldn't have shown it anyway due to some top-secret OP strats, but uh, anyway... Yeah, let's go over the starting builds here. I'm going uh, Vampire Counts, but uh, instead of Gorse, I've got Heinrich Kemmler, which is definitely subpar, but hey, there you go. Uh, Festus is up front, and the Chosen of Corn with dual weapons is his going to be his kind of main healing target. Also, the Mirror Guard. We've got a Chaos War Shrine of Slanesh, so he can go double Mortis or, or Mortis and heal. Uh, some Warriors with Halberds also, just to make a nice backbone here. Couple more over there, and that's pretty much it for his starting army. For myself, I've gone Kemmler, super wide. We've got zombies here, uh, skeleton warriors, skeleton spears, a necromancer on a corpse cart, a balefire corpse cart, which uh, I didn't realize has actually been significantly reworked. Now gives uh, flaming and magical attacks plus 20% fire resistance to all units in an area of effect, although I don't think it's actually working because, uh, yeah, it doesn't. It's not affecting these Skeleton Warriors currently, so we'll have to check that out and see if it's actually properly bugged. I've also got a couple of Blood Knights as well, and then let's look at the reserves. In my reserve army, I've got the Devils of Schwarzhofen, Regiment of Renown Vargeis. We've got three Grave Guard with great weapons, two Cairn Wraiths, a couple of di uh, yeah, Dire Wolves, including the Dire Pack, four Fell Bats, Skeleton Warriors, and Zombies. For my opponent's reserves, he's got three, four Chaos Spawn, rather, two Manticores, two Marauder Horsemen, two Poison Warhounds, and five Basic Marauders. And we're back. So yes, already I will say my build somewhat subpar in that I don't have Gorst or a Mortis Engine, which is going to be a problem considering there is a very, very strong elite high value infantry here. So let's just unpack Chosen of Corn real quick as we look at some other things. Um, yeah, Chosen of Corn with dual weapons, 130 armor, only 49 defense, I say only 49, it is quite good, 56 attack, uh, with a bonus versus infantry of 10, putting them up to 66, 42 charge bonus is insane for a unit of infantry, because that applies to all 80 models, puts them over 100 weapon strength on the charge, which is insane, even against cavalry or large units, that's gonna be a lot of damage, uh, yeah, immune to psychology from the frenzy and a little bit of spell resistance as well. So uh, just an insanely strong unit. And uh, since I don't have a mortis engine to drain them out, I mean, they would still lawnmower most of this entire force uh, during the time that it would take the mortis engine to drain them out. But instead, I'm going to have to literally just throw bodies at them until they die, which doesn't seem like the best prospect in the world currently. Um, yeah, my Blood Knights also don't have a lot of great targets to go after initially here. I was definitely wishing I had taken even like Hex Race or some other kind of armor piercing tool, but here comes the Slanesh War Shrine. I talked about this a little bit in the Summer Championship stream, but all the War Shrines have different effects. The Slanesh and Nurgle ones are definitely the best. And those are the ones you're likely to see. The Slanesh one has kind of a Mortis Engine, and then the Nurgle one has, uh, yeah, an AoE Heal, but... Let's not kid ourselves, we're all here mostly for one thing, or there's one sole reason really why I'm showing you this replay, and that is to showcase these Chosen of Corn here as they just start to murder hordes of skeletons and zombies. So I'm just going to leave this camera static here for a minute and let you guys just kind of soak up the detail here, the animations, as they basically one-shot a lot of these unit models just straight up. Ooh, there's a decapitation, there's a decapitation, <laughs> you know, just... Oh yeah, just absolutely cutting them to ribbons, and already both one unit of skeletons and one unit of zombies, plus a summoned unit of zombies are all basically dead. It's pretty impressive stuff. The Blood Knights are going to try and swing around and help affect this fight a little bit. I've got some Graveguard with great weapons also coming in here, try and give a tiny bit of inf anti-infantry AP. If you kind of think about their stats a little bit, uh, I mean... 30 attack plus 19 bonus versus infantry, I guess, is 49 melee attack. That is the same melee defense, so that would be there at the base 35% chance to hit. But considering how much damage the Warriors of Corn are going to be going to be doing in return, plus the Slanesh Mortis engine got probably instantly charged by the number of kills made within the area of effect. That is how these uh, Giver of Glory effects uh, get going. And if I try and highlight one of my units here that's getting horrifically murdered, 
Uh, we can try and find the effect in and of itself, man. Look at this unit of zombies. I can't even... I literally can't even. Yeah, the Gitro Torturous Glory is the one from the uh, War Shrine there. And on top of the other hundred effects going on. So anyway, let's get in here, get in close, watch some of the Sternsmen fight it out with, like, the Mirror Guard and so forth. I mean, this grind is definitely not going to go in my favor, but I kind of knew it wouldn't, to be honest. I mean, it's pretty apparent that uh, Chosen of Corn are just going to mow through all of the chaff that you feed them, literally. Uh, so let's check in on the kill total. They're almost 500 kills already, uh, less than 300 damage value, though. So that is just vampire counts in a nutshell. Nice stream of corruption comes in from Festus here. In the back, my Blood Knights get all kinds of caught up on the Marauders and the spawn and whatnot. Just really not a good situation for me. Did manage to capture that one objective there and, uh, and yeah, bringing in some heck Cairn Wraiths and some Fell Bats to try and fight this warrior with Halberd up on the high ground here. Maybe split push, cap the side objectives. We're slowly kind of pushing through on the center objective as well a little bit. It's back and forth quite, quite a lot in terms of capture weight. But uh, Chosen of Corn here getting healed by Festus. I don't think have lost a single unit model yet. Yeah, literally haven't lost a single unit model and are closing in on 550 kills now. They do have an actual unit to fight, though. The uh, Brave Guards, of course. Oof, going to get hit by another stream of corruption as well. And then, yeah, I mean, in terms of the armor-piercing kind of component of their weapon strength, I'd have to sit down and do the math to see, like, how many hits it would take to kill a Graveguard. Probably just with a full health Graveguard, it's maybe two or three hits, I would have to guess, depending on the armor roll, although it is a pretty big variability on the armor roll, since Graveguards are, what, 90 armor? Yeah, so anywhere from 45 to 90% of that non-armor piercing damage will be mitigated depending on the dice roll, so there's quite a bit of RNG there. 45% variability, which is uh, considerable, let's say. But uh, anyway, the Brave Guards are generally going to trade pretty well, though, of course, against Chaos Halberd Infantry. Stream of Corruption is just continuing to dish damage, and at this point, Festus really doesn't have to spend a lot of Winds of Magic on actual healing. That healing elixirs can just sustain the Chosen here as they continue to cut through literally everything. Meanwhile, up on the high ground, the Cairn Race and the Fell Bats actually don't do too hot, mostly because the Spawn comes in here and a couple of Poison Warhounds. It's just too much bodies, despite the physical resistance of the can race. Can race also don't have a ton of actual melee attack to get through the Halberd's melee defense. So there it is. Anyway, let's get back and watch Chosen of Corn continue to just cut everything up. I mean, at this point, unfortunately, it's mostly just taking skulls. There's not a lot of actual blood to be had other than the summoned zombies because, uh, yeah, I'm not likely to get a lot more zombies actually into combat here, but there you go. It's got some skeletons also in the grave guards. A little bit of uh, invocation of the heck there. No, Harbinger of Pestilence. Oh, interesting. I'm just learning all these new kind of visual effects and how to identify them. Oh, man. Got a battle of the Mortis Engines here. It's the uh, Slanesh Brine. Tries to push away the Necromancer on his corpse cart. The Balefire corpse cart here. Not even a Necromancer. There you go. I mean, at this point, I'm feeling pretty far behind the curve. Value damage-wise, my opponent is way ahead. But even still, I mean, the can race, one advantage to them with that speed and frostbite, they can reposition very quickly, get into combat against this warrior with Halberd. It's going to be a much better situation for them, kind of supporting those skeletons. And then more Graveguard with Grey Weapons just continuing to attack. Look at the just pile of bodies at the feet though, of these corn chosen here. They are uh, still having to fight some... Elite Skeletons, but more Summoned Zombies are only going to do so much, which is uh, literally feed their kill total. Warriors with Halberds also holding out quite nicely. I believe I missed entirely the Krell Summon and Kemler getting killed, but that's not important. What is important? I mean, I guess Krell is also a champion of Korn, so it might have been nice to highlight him. Maybe you saw him there in the background somewhere, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Today's not about Krell. Certainly we will make some videos about Krell and... He'll be showing up in Domination, no doubt. Once Gorst gets nerfed, I think Kemler will become kind of the go-to in a lot of situations. Kemler and a Mortis Engine together is quite good, although I didn't have the Mortis Engine component here. But anyway, now the Can Race themselves can get into combat, and uh, the, hopefully the Physical Resistance will help them uh, kill the Horn Champions, although I doubt it. This, that also means that the Spawn and the Halberds from the High Ground objective can collapse down here, though and start to finish things off. And 
What would you know? And here comes the Doubles of Schwarzhoffen. Finally, an elite armor piercing unit with a decent charge bonus. Uh, 29 charge, 60 melee attack can get in here and actually start to wreck some of these <laughs> some of these chosen. Oof, big bloody decapitations. They get absolutely gibbed by the devils. That being said, spawn spawns come in here. The chosen are pretty much at their healing cap, but not quite. Still 20 models online and fighting. They do get terrified away by the devils there, so mostly their saga is at an end, but my saga is mostly at an end too. I'm just desperately throwing in a couple of summon zombies here. Kemler is back. He can summon Krell again, um, because that's just how domination works. You can use those limited use abilities again, but uh, here, Cairn Wraiths, Dire Pack are only going to be able to do so much. I was really hoping that the Cairn Wraiths Terror would kind of help me against the Poison Warhounds and either hold or terrify away those marauders but too little too late blood knights have managed to hang around the whole battle too i mean of course they are very appropriate also in the blood theme i haven't really highlighted them too much but <laughs> mostly they were just <laughs> excuse me running around the back line cycle charging uh, spawns and everything you probably saw them you can tell me anyway <laughs> now why not just keep it in cinematic cam though i mean at this point it's just a big bloody mess literally and um, yeah, there's still a handful of these, uh, corn dudes hanging around. This dude's like, hey, hey, bro. Hey, you, you protect me with your halberd, right? You're gonna protect me from those devils? Even though I think the devils are gone? Yeah, the devils are actually gone, so... Gemler also just gets immediately mauled by spawn by himself. So, no surprises there. But, uh, very interesting to see, you know, some people might criticize my play there, and then definitely suboptimal, but it was, it's kind of an experiment, you know? In like a semi-real-world battle situation, how many kills can the Chosen of Corn actually get? And let's look at the final total. I'm not even going to show you on the battle screen. I have to go to the post-battle screen. Oh yeah, 1k, a thousand kills. That's right, folks. Over a thousand kills in a multiplayer battle is something that's really only possible against vampire counts and in domination, but... Uh, Wow, these guys did actually pay for themselves, uh, considering all the grave guards that they ended up killing. That wasn't just zombies at the end of the day. Uh, they definitely ground suit through some higher value units. And credit to Festus, also 200 kills, you know, with the uh, streams of corruption there, a little bit of drain, and also heal capping the Chosen of Corn, 154 kills, and a lot of damage value on the Slanesh War Shrine as well. Using these two units in tandem, again, you charge up. The healing of the war shrine uh, very quickly and also the mirror guard quite strong as well uh, 218 kills there I mean just in general the mid-tier warriors infantry with the healing of Festus is so strong in domination as we saw in the summer championship in many situations spawn also doing a great job marauders here as well on my side I mean pretty much everything's gonna struggle the blood knights actually did pretty well Charging out spawns and kind of uh, trying to affect the battlefield, but ultimately it was a pretty failed effort by almost all of my armor piercing units. That being said, the grave cards still paid for themselves, so it's kind of a cost effective trade for everyone. I think due to the healing inflating the values on both sides, you kind of get some, uh, some pretty interesting situations there with the army damage value kind of reflecting that. Anyway, Devils also did not do enough to pay for themselves, but there you go. It's an interesting one. I can actually show you guys the menu screens now. So if we go ahead and take a look just real quick, I wanted to go over the War Shrines since I haven't had a chance to do that yet in, no, oh, not multiplayer lobbies. Let's just go Skirmish versus AI. So I haven't had a chance really to do that yet, and I now can. Let's go over to the Warriors of Chaos, and here we go. So yeah, you've got the War Shrine here. And as you guys should know by now, I can also show you the customization system. So any unit with a mark, any unit with this little gear here, I should say, you can select the unit and customize it as you would a hero or lord. And you see in the UI there, units with marks of chaos, zero out of four. This is what I've been talking about um, in uh, just in general <laughs> in, in my videos is that you can take up to four marks with the unit caps. And so let's quickly just touch on all of them. The Undivided one, which is also available, I should add, to the Norskin uh, Warshrine Mammoth. 
gifts. The, the Giver of Glory has been changed on that as well to now be the same. It gives physical resistance up to 10% for kills made in an AoE and also plus 10 leadership. So that plus 10 leadership is going to be the same for all the War Shrines, but then the effect changes based on the War Shrines. And I'd expect someone to mod pretty quickly in uh, Mark War Shrines for the Mammoths, which would be a great mod idea anyway, anyone who wants to make that. Horn 1, appropriately enough, gives a little bit of a melee attack and weapon damage buff. Not actually very useful, especially for warriors who can take different war shrines, but there you go. Nurgle has the AoE heal, of course. This is the one that you're going to see alongside the Slanesh one uh, pretty often. You might even see both of them in a single Warriors of Chaos build, especially in Domination. Uh, Slanesh, you saw, gives an area of effect damage, and Zinch gives area of effect spell mastery, which is a little bit odd. You need to have this thing close to the front line to be charging up your spells, but then your spell caster needs to be near it in order to gain the benefit of spell mastery. So kind of a little bit clunky in terms of usage. I haven't tried it out myself a lot because of that, but potentially could be really interesting, especially for a Zinch character that already has like Greater Arcane Conduit and can stack that extra spell mastery up to 20% is pretty significant. I mean, it is uh, it is certainly extra damage. So it's something to look out for. And then I guess that's basically it for today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this one. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.